my father was a taxi driver who got his business to the point where he owned his own taxi company, very small, just a few cars. And he drove one of the special cars. And my father had this job. My father had this special client. We lived in Brooklyn, New York at the time. He had this special client that only he would take care of every single day. This was a Wall Street guy from our area. And my father would drive him down to Wall Street every single day and actually pick him up and bring him back to Brooklyn every day. It turns out that this guy was a very serious gold bug. Now we're going all the way back to the beginning of the 1970s. I was three, four years old at the time. And he impressed upon my father, um, you have to really start investing in gold for your son. Your son's small. This is going to be life-changing. He, he got my father to understand or believe that at some point in the near future, the um, the ceiling that the U.S. government had placed on gold um, uh, due to the agreement all the way back in the early 1950s, when the petrodollar, when, when the dollar came, when the dollar became the world reserve currency, um, partially backed by gold, gold was um, fixed at a $35 an ounce price. So anyway, to make a long story short, this, this gentleman convinced my father that that was going to break. And while he couldn't promise when it was going to break, he felt that when you artificially keep a market capped um, and prevent it from moving, when the cap is released, it will make up for all that was lost during its period of imprisonment. And that was his theory. And it triggered my father. So he encouraged my father that if you can find a way to at least buy an ounce of gold every single week of your life until this happens. Well, I don't quite know how much my father bought, but he did for years. And just as he said, um, I believe that date was, it's special to us. Um, August 15th, 1971, President Nixon takes us off the gold standard, um, which in a sense is America's first real official default, but it's not marketed or couched that way. Mm -hmm. But the effect that it had on gold changed my family's life. Do you understand? In a short period of time, gold went from $35 an ounce, but my father had been accumulating at $35 an ounce for a long time. Um, it went from 35 to nearly a thousand dollars like that. Unbelievable. And this was a life-changing event for me. Now I was too young to understand. I mean, why we went from why, why my friends changed, why our home changed, why our cars changed, why my clothes changed, why my schools changed, why did our, why did my life change this so dramatically like this? And later on in life, I began to understand in my early teens that my father had this huge, big, giant gold play that changed our lives forever. Mm. And I'm like, well, as I began to delve a little bit more into what he did and how it happened, I realized that my dad had dwindled a good portion of the wealth that he had accumulated with that one big play, trying to duplicate it again. And that's when I began to be gripped. I began to realize, John, that look, if one act, one investment, one play, could change a family's life forever that way. And what would multiple plays over a life or hundreds of plays or thousands of plays over a life do? Is this something that I could do with my life if one thing like this, one decision had the effect that it had on my life? What if I could get this to a place where I could make multiple decisions like my dad made and at the same time, not have to dwindle what I've made off one lucky play, be good enough at it to just duplicate it over and over again. And that sparked my desire, 13, 14 years old, I want to do this. When I found out there was a job called a trader, that was it. I gave up everything in life, John. My, my parents had invested from the time I was three years old into a, a professional piano career for me. I had some talent in that area. 
I went to a special school for, for, for piano protégés. My parents had teachers fly in from all over the world. I was being set up to be a concert pianist. At the age of 15, I dropped it all at the behest of my mom, my dad, everything. I stopped practicing, which I was doing anywhere between six and 10 hours a day. Wow. I was playing concerts throughout the United States with this special group of children uh, um, of young pianists. Mm. And, and my, you know, I, I was settled to go that route until I got bitten by the bug. And while my parents were very, very upset with my decision to really take my life in that direction, I always tell them it's my dad's fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they were, they, they were my father and my mother and this gentleman, they were avid chess players. Wow. And so he would sometimes come over for dinner and he would knock down a chess game with my mom and dad every time he came over for dinner. I just remember those moments. How like, cool is that? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that that's, crazy? So, that's so cool. But, you know, I, you know, there is a special place in my family's heart for this gentleman, which I, I'm not allowed to say his name, but um he really had a huge profound impact impact on our lives and i would say that indirectly he's one of the reasons that i am a market participant today and he and my dad are one of the reasons why throughout my entire career i've pretty much been a gold bug up until recently yeah. um where i've abandoned gold for bitcoin <laughs> instead but um i think that's the gold 2.0 but and more but um, it, it has always had an important part in my life. But I then took that, I took that passion and desire to just basically throw myself into the markets in every possible way I could. I, I, my mother was an assistant librarian. I grabbed every financial book I could off the shelves. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do that and order books and not have to take them back on time because my mother was in the library system. And um, I devoured every possible thing I could get my hands on. And I would have to say that from the age of 16, 15 and a half, 16, John, I've never done a single other thing in my life. I've never got distracted. I've never, I never had a plan B. I never did something else. I never took a break. I never took a vacation from this. I never got to the point where I put it aside and returned back to it. This is the only thing that I've ever wanted to do in my life, my entire life from the age of 15 and a half, 16. And it That's... has been the same up until this very day. And I will tell you this, there's not a moment that I don't pinch myself, that I look back, John, and I realize that I've lived such a, an incredibly privileged life, despite the fact that those first years were extraordinarily difficult for me. Um, as they are um, with most people, I think, trying to get their gain their footing in this space. But um, I look back and I, I feel blessed because I've been able to really do what I feel that I was born to do from a very early age without ever deviating, ever.